It's a perfect day. I have all of the free time to myself. I'm thinking of recording a video. But wait, I look on my phone. I see somebody sent me a reel on Instagram. Or I go to look for an idea. I get hooked on a video on YouTube. I just find myself scrolling through my phone. One video after the other, I waste away my day. What could have been a productive day spent recording turned into me just watching other people's content, wasting my time. I swore to record a video and become a producer, but now I'm a consumer. I watch people's content, I watch reels. I've tried to make, th I tried to solve this problem many times before. I tried deleting the apps, I tried putting blockers on, I tried everything. But I keep finding myself reinstalling the apps or disabling the blocker just one more time so I can go back on the app so I can continue watching that video or watch another reel. Day in and day out, I find myself these same problems. Going back on these apps, being hooked by the algorithms, and ultimately wasting my time. You ever think what happens when you go on your phone when you're like, you just pick up your phone and go on Instagram or something? These, uh, these evil companies, they're luring you for your phones and they have these algorithms designed to elicit addictive behaviors in you. Whenever you go on YouTube, you don't understand the algorithms behind what's influencing your decisions. YouTube, it shows you the right video at the right time to get you to stay on their platform. It knows that you, you click on videos. It knows how much time you spend on each video watching it, what videos make you click off of YouTube, what videos keep you on YouTube, and they'll show you the ones that you want to see to keep you there as long as possible. Basically, you're a slave to your phone. Instagram Reels, same way. All the algorithms, TikTok. It's going to show you the videos you want to see so they can get what they want. So basically, you are working for your phone when it should be the other way around. Your phone should work for you. Your phone should service you and aid you. That's what we think, that's what we think our phones are for. My phone is so helpful. I, use it. I wouldn't be able to live without my phone. But really... You probably could, let's be honest, and probably live way better than you are right now. Because as it is, you're a slave to your phone, and nothing's changing unless I do something and I step in. Let's, let's, first, let's start off with the first way to break your addiction with social media and to how to make your phone work for you, and not the other way around. So I remember going through this, um, so I remember going through this one article on Medium. I was reading on Medium, and I saw this article about what what is what causes people to have high self control. Self control. We think of self control. We think of people like gritting their teeth, resisting the temptation. People who can just like have a cookie in front of them and just be like, "I don't care enough. I have so high self control. That doesn't bother me. I can easily resist temptations." So that was that's what we think of high self control people. When in reality, this article showed to me that. People who are shown to have the high self-control, have that uh, stat, status, they aren't good at resisting temptations. More like they are good at avoiding them. You think, you think these people are gritting their teeth, they're like, they're just good at resisting temptations? When it's actually not, it's way easier than you think. For example, a person with high self-control, they just don't have junk food in their home they don't have in their home, they avoid it. Instead of just having junk food in their house and being able to resist it, they avoid it, not resist. I'm guessing you could see where I'm going with this. Instead of just having the apps on your phone and trying to resist the urge to click on them or something, just delete them, just delete them. I don't care. Delete YouTube, delete Instagram, delete Snapchat, TikTok. I don't know what other apps people use. Those are the main ones. Just go on your screen time right now and see what apps are taking the majority of your time. I'll do this right now. Okay, you can't read it. But for me, it says 56 minutes. The main one is checklist, safari, photos. I really haven't used much of like social media on my phone. So you can see this method works if I can, if, if it can work for me. Also, also delete all the games. I don't care how far you've gone on Retro Bowl or Brawl Stars, delete that shit. The problem with these apps that you're using on your phone is they're they're 
cheap hits of dopamine. They're, it's just causing destructive behavior. Basically, you're taking happiness away from your future self and giving it to yourself right now. Your future self's going to be like, why'd you waste all that time in high school, wasting your time on your phone when you could have been doing something more productive with your time? You know, maybe like getting money, working, getting girls, I don't know, doing stuff that actually you actually cared about. The way to the way to become immune to depression and not to be sad all the time is through delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is so so important. People become happy is because they'll do the hard thing right now, so their future self has no excuse to be depressed. Right now they will work super hard to get the aesthetic body. So their future self gets to have that and they have you can't be depressed when you're like all these things, great things are happening to you because of what your past self did. So do it for your future self. Delayed gratification is amazing. Get get a bunch of these delayed gratification habits or hobbies, like journaling, meditation, stuff that's not fun to do right now, like ice baths, exercise is a very big one. Stuff that's not fun to do right now, but is going to reward your future self because of what you've done right now. That's the way of success as I see it. I need to post my I need to post stories on Instagram. I need to text girls on there. I've you've, you're going to have a bunch of excuses, you know. The way I get around this personally as somebody who posts tries to post on Instagram, I will just upload the photos from my phone to my PC then upload them on the PC. Because it's way harder for me to get like hooked on the Instagram Reels. My Instagram Reels doesn't even work on my PC. So, and also you need to consider why am I even posting again? Like, why why am I posting? If if you stop posting today, think what would happen? What would happen if I just stopped posting today? My guess, my likely, my most likely guess is that nothing's going to happen. People don't notice us as much as we think, as much as we give ourselves credit for. There's a spotlight effect, as I've talked about many times. We are only focused on ourselves. The other people that you're posting to, they they're, they only care about their story, their posts, themselves. They don't really care too much about what you have. You can you can see this for yourself. You'll you'll go through go through your Instagram story and you see other people's, you just skip through, you don't care. You spend more time thinking about yourself than you will anybody else. I, of course I can still say this and you still won't take action. Right now, so right, right here, raise your hand up and slap yourself. That's, that's from me. You need to make a change and you need to look at your screen time. I can, t I can totally understand why you don't want to do this. As I said, the algorithms are super addictive. It's not completely your fault. It's like, if you think about this, you're going up against all of these super smart scientists who are like experts in their field you're going against some like psychologist who is trying to make you addictive to the addicted to this app that's who you're competing against and yes yeah, it's, it's hard you're when they everybody you're everything you do tr somebody's trying to get your attention somebody's trying to gr get your time get your money everybody's closing in on all corners as i say so, yeah, it's hard. Of course, it's going to be hard. But like all good things in life, good things come from the, like, challenging stuff. It's not supposed to be easy, but it is worth it. I hope that you can take advice from this video. You can start to change that. And you can start to not become so addicted to your phone. Your phone, get your phone to work for you, not you work for your phone. Like I said, thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one.